if you want to be able to create sustainable success, then you need to be able to show up fully as you. I'm Carissa Carner, your host, and today my guest, Andre Lamb, is going to share about how showing up as you is the key to attracting authentic success. Authentic success. I love that. And you're going to love this. So Andre is a former software developer turned person developer. With a career that spans almost two decades with stints in Toastmasters and BNI, also known as Business Network International, he trained, or excuse me, he transitioned from software development to sales to coaching. And now in the coaching world, he's doing what he loves, which is to become his best self while helping others to become their best selves. Andre coaches from his hometown of Edmonton, Alberta, And he loves moving his body. He loves bodybuilding and dancing. In fact, we were just talking about the dance of conversation. Andre, it is so wonderful to welcome you here. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate this. Uh, Just a a space that you get to create and, and, and let others shine and share those stories, right? To inspire, to really, uh, go deeper to what authentic success means, right? Success, going back to you, why is that sustainable? Well, when you're you, you stop self-sabotaging yourself. You stop getting out of your own way because when you're not congruent, when you're not aligned, people can feel it. You can feel it. Mm-hmm. And we put up barriers. We put up resistance. When you know who you are and you start loving that, then, then things start to happen. Like I find that the world starts reacting to you because you're kind of like unapologetically you, Right. And you just respect that. You set boundaries for yourself. And, and speaking of dancing, I actually was dancing last night. And it was you a great were. way. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Friday, went out to uh, the Bower here in Edmonton. It's great music. Kind of a house feel to it, electronic music. It was a great way for me to move my energy in and out of my body. So it was very healing for me. That's why I love anything movement. Uh, they get myself right back in the right state of mind. Will you say a little about that? And then we'll dive into your journey so that our listeners can learn a little bit more about how you got to this place where you're connected to yourself. But mm. I'd love to hear more about that as you bring it up, this idea of moving your body. Is there mm. a connection between moving your body and being you authentically? Yeah, yeah because because um, we're all of energy. Um, quantum physics proves that everything is energy vibrating at a certain frequency. So if you think about it, if I don't move, I'm, when I'm stationary, I'm depressed. I'm not releasing any energy. I go inwards. I suck down like a black hole. And it's not a really good feeling. Imagine water, right? If it's stale, what happens with it? Bacteria, parasites start to grow. Right? It's not, it's, it starts to smell. But what we love to see in the mountains especially is flowy water. It looks clean. It's clear. It's moving just like your body, just like your energy as well. Your energy yearns for movement. We look at little kids, they're bundles of energy. They're energizer bunnies. They have so much energy in these little tiny bodies. So where does that energy come from? We have infinite amounts of energy. And just by getting up, moving with movement, it helps me to express myself. So going back to you, you express yourself through that. If I don't move, how am I expressing myself? Even when I'm talking, I'm expressing energy in myself. Mm -hmm. So movement just helps move that energy through your body to express yourself. Whether that be going out for a jog, going dancing, even journaling, everything requires movement, right? If we don't move, the only time we don't move is when, you know, it's kind of flatline. And usually when we're flatline, what does that mean, right? We're dead. So movement, healing, get going. One of the techniques I've learned that really gets me going is if I'm feeling off, I can just simply crouch down and do three squats, jumping up and yelling out, I'm excited. Imagine doing that. If you did that three times, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. You'll see. You'll see how you feel differently. You start I feel excited. Like just yeah. thinking about just just imagining it in my mind. I mean, that's the power of the mind too. Just imagining doing that in my mind, I feel a shift in the energy of my body. Yeah, and you see a shift where it also moves me from my head to my heart. Mm. 
Because when I'm here, I'm like, oh, I think too much. I, I paralyze, right? I'm confused. Mm -hmm. But when I just jump up and down, I'm not thinking, mm -hmm. right? I'm feeling, I'm being. Mm. And it's yeah, in the being. And it brings you into your body. You know, I, I share with my clients a technique that I love, which is to, if you're anxious or nervous before speaking, or even if you feel that what you're talking about, that's that stale, small, uh, flat line feeling to just mm. shake your body, to just shake it off, just it's shake cool. your body. Yeah. And it, it frees some of that nervous energy and it energizes yeah. you in a way that feels good and brings in more confidence. Absolutely. Anchoring, right? Like power poses, stuff like that, standing mm -hmm. up straight, breathing deeply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it affects everything. It affects, yeah. you know, our, our, our thoughts leading to, to these feelings leading to what we're going to do, our actions, right? So That's yeah. right. And Powerful. I would love to hear. So I know you, well, at least what I think from what you've shared with me before mm -hmm. is that you haven't always been in this place, that it was mm -hmm. a journey to get here for you. Would you be willing to share yeah. about that journey that you've Absolutely. been on. Absolutely. And I think we're just a product of our environment, right? And as if like at a spiritual level, which I've developed, I've chosen this, though at the time I didn't know. And it's just kind of like we're as kids, we don't have a choice. We don't we don't get to choose our parents, right? We're just in there. We we need to be taken care of. Like we're we're totally useless, right? We can't even defend ourselves as babies. So as a baby, we're we're programmed to kind of adapt to our environment. Instead of animals, we're, we're kind of more live wired, right? We see what's the nuances of the culture and we adapt ourselves to it. So we, we develop these behaviors, which leads to limiting beliefs and decisions just for the desire to be loved and appreciated, which means survival. So for me, my parents came from Vietnam as refugees from the Vietnam War. During that time, there's a lot of refugees from Vietnam fleeing that country and my parents met along the way through a mutual friend, and they had me like almost instantaneously fast. I was born here in Edmonton, Alberta. Why they chose Edmonton? It was the first place available for them to go to, right? And that's what is kind of the max exodus of mostly my mom's family. Though they came here really with nothing, and they worked. And they still work at the same job till today together. Imagine that. Wow. Together. Yeah, just seeing each other every second of the day at the same job for over 40 years together, right? So with that in mind, they've always been working and I never had a lot of time with them. I was in daycare, passed around, stuff like that. Mm. And they were always adamant on education. So we hear before, you know, with, with people coming in from, from other countries that education is so important. We want you to have a better life. So they were so strict with me, strict to me to the point where I became closed minded. I wasn't secure with myself. I didn't feel like I was enough because how they were taught probably by their parents was you're doing this wrong, negative reinforcement comparing to other kids, thinking that will motivate me. Mm -hmm. So I realized over time, my love language was words of affirmation. I was just looking for encouragement and support. I do love tough love when I feel like it's, it's coming from that place. Though I felt like they hated me. Mm -hmm. like I, did, I felt like there was something wrong with me. So what happened was I secluded. And instead of kind of being the good son and just stepping up and earning their, their, their love, I went the other way of proving, okay, if you think I'm stupid, if you think I'm worthless, then I'll be that. So throughout my childhood, my school, I just daydreamed. I didn't pay attention. I slacked off. Luckily, I passed, right? Though I got involved with the wrong types of people. Because I didn't feel that connection at home. So I got involved in drugs early on. Drugs and alcohol, smoked, junior high, started skipping school. Still passed somehow, right? Call my, my, my guardian spirit or something looking after me. And then not until my brother and sister came to the picture nine years later. So there's a huge gap between us that I'm like, oh, I don't want to endanger my family. As I looked around the kids I was hanging around with, there was no connection to their family at all. Some of their parents, you know, passed away from the war or they weren't here with them. And I don't want that danger because I hear a lot of like drive-bys and, and people getting jumped and you're always looking behind your back. And I was living with my parents. Right. So I don't want to bring that drama. Wow. Back that was, that was a real wake up call for you. It sounds it like is. in that moment, like that's, that's a moment when something shifted for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I, I decided to get my act together though, still having this limited belief that I wasn't smart enough. So I didn't believe I was worthy for university. 
I went to a technical school instead, still great school. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. So again, going back to having no mentors, no father figure, no even mother figure in terms of like empowering me. They were just there to provide a space to feed me, to house me. That, that's it. And it There's sounds no like to, to let you know what you're doing wrong. Yep. That was very critical yeah. all the time, you know, and anything I would do, there would be something wrong with it. Oh. So why would I, why would I share something with them? And, you know, I built a lot of resentment towards them over the years. It has shifted now, though. I just, I couldn't trust them. So, which means I couldn't trust anybody else. So the friends I would hang around with that party and the, did all the bad stuff that at the time I, you know, I was this very disconnected from myself. We just, we just kind of stayed surface, right? We just numbed ourselves. We didn't need to go deep with each other. So I, I treated all my friendships the same way. I didn't know any mm-hmm. better. So I didn't trust myself, meaning I didn't trust going to counselors or any, anybody that would lead me along the way. So I chose a career in software development out of the whim of my love for video games and surfing the internet. And I did both as a numbing distraction. Though I thought, hey, that would be fun if that would be a career. Guess what? It wasn't like that. I wasn't surfing the internet. I wasn't playing video games, right? It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. But when I committed that I had to get this done because I remember my dad coming to me and and catching me with drugs, basically, and, and asked me, you know, you have a choice. You want to go this way or go this way? And that was another pivotal moment that mm-hmm. I, he, he had actually a man of Mac talk to me. I remember that moment. So I, I committed, tried, and I, I passed with honors. So that, that, was a, that was a chink in the armor of like, am I smart enough here? Uh, yeah, wait a minute. Some, this belief maybe, maybe isn't true. Yeah, maybe it isn't universal, right? Uh, like, okay, so I came up with the chip of my shoulder, proving to myself that I was smart. First, by looking smart, like wearing glasses, talking smart, studying on topics and stuff like that, just to put this bravado on. And that helped me climb the corporate ladder. So getting a career in software development with oil and gas, I essentially, something new was exciting, kept me going. Right? Well, it sounds too like you use that principle of fake it till you make it, that mm-hmm. you, you work from the outside in. You know, if I wear the glasses, if I say the things, if I act a certain way, then maybe I'll believe it too. Like yeah. showing the outside world, Hey, I am smart. And it sounds like that kind of started to infiltrate inside and you mm-hmm. started to see yourself differently. Yeah. And it also with action, right. Um, it's, it's difficult for me to say that I knew who I was. No, I didn't. And maybe most people don't know who they were when they born. I feel like with enough experiences, right. That we, from that experience filter through to say, this is who I am. This is my identity. This is congruent to me. Though I did never have that encouragement support to do it, I had to kind of do it on my own, right? And, mm. and a lot of people do as well. So through that, you know, seeing seeing how what my parents did with their job as well, being with the same job, subconsciously, I was comfortable. I wasn't in that big of a risk taker. And that's why I was with that company for 12 years. Though, fortunately, that company was great to me. The people there were great to me and gave me opportunities to, to move and explore and grow, right? So that kept me going. But at that time, there was no identity, no sense of self, of myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not until... This is so yeah. important, I think, because I can imagine a lot of people can relate to your story. Mm-hmm. And so if you're listening and you can relate to this, you've had this experience, or maybe you're feeling it now of, I don't really know who I am. That's one of the reasons I think your story is so powerful. And what we're talking about today is so powerful is that... Mm-hmm. There is a path, there is a road to walk, to be able to understand and connect to, to you, to the real, Mm. the you-ness of you. Mm. Totally. Totally. And just start, right. Just, just collect some experiences, take those risks when you're younger. Uh, I always love to say like, to know what you want, you got to know what you don't want. So Mm. it's, it's it's a process of just filtering through taking that massive action and figure out, Oh, I love this. I love that. I'm great at this. This is my zones of genius. This is what I don't like. Though if I you know, stay stuck in my head or, or, or hesitant, then it's really difficult for me to really know what my true passions are, who I am. So I had to have that experience yeah. to then filter through to know who I am today. Yeah. So what came next? So you were with the software company for 12 years. Yeah. And then I, h- how did you get from there to here? You know, I call it divine intervention. It required a layoff for me to change. Um, 
I know in my heart, if I really listen, I wasn't happy at all. It, it was a career that it did for the money, to pay the bills, got comfortable. It wasn't something that I loved doing. Um, I moved away from programming. I could do it, though it drained my energy to more of a, a manager leader for software developers. I enjoyed that. For some reason, I enjoyed being around people, right? And, and that, that was a kind of sign of where I am today. We worked for oil and gas. It was back in 2016. That's when I laid off. But around before 2015, your you price per barrel crashed, right? From like $100 down to like 40 And that's when, you know, the first thing that gets cut is people. So they laid off my team. And I knew I was kind of next. I kind of called for it. So I call it my get out of jail free card. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I had all this experience. I could go back into software. I could. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, even, even my, my, my boss at the time, mm-hmm. great guy willing to, you know, put him on the line to, to, to recommend me, right. To, to certain, certain companies and stuff like that. Though so I'm like, ah, this is my chance to try something different. And what, what, what was calling my heart was sales. I always looked at salespeople as someone I aspire to be because they had this confidence because it seemed like they knew who they were. Mm. They're very charismatic. During my whole time before that, I was pretty much a follower. I didn't trust anybody. I'd rather be followed by, led by, by other people. I also had this, this sense that I had to be putting people on a pedestal because I didn't have worth of myself, putting others and listening, especially with my, my former bosses and stuff like that. That goes back to my parents, right? Can't talk back. Mm-hmm. So sales, funny enough, all the people I hung around with afterwards were, were in sales capacities and that was a change of me going into the personal development realm and when i went to personal development coming across people like jim Rohn, john maxwell zig ziglar tony robbins right call them the ogs uh-huh. personal development. it made me look within it made me separate myself from my mind to start with that awareness awareness before change once i had the awareness that's when my sense of identity came about because i started questioning who am I? What do I want? What's my purpose? I didn't have time or even the awareness to ask those questions before. Yes, I, I, I really hear that, how it took exposure to these new ideas and these new ways to being and almost modeling techniques, ideas of how to look inside. I get the sense that you didn't really have a map for that before because you didn't get mm-hmm. to learn that as a kid. And so this opened up this whole new world for you of how you can look inside, how you even know what questions to ask when you ask yourself those questions that you just went through. Yeah. And, you know, I'm very grateful for how it happened because, you know, at the time being raised with the limiting beliefs that I had of like, not good enough, not smart enough, you're not worthy. Like, it was really hard for me to get out of that, that vortex when, when in, in my heart, words of affirmation so important to me. Um, people's approval, uh, the recognition. I care what people think. I'm a people pleaser. Uh, when I get that from my parents, it's like, it's very depressing. Like, like why? what's the point, right? And it had to happen for me to go to listen to my heart and be like, okay, let's do sales. And the personal development then empowered me on my own to then continue to look. Because ever since I got a taste of that, I just never looked back. Mm. Yeah. Professional development, sure. Personal development, that's a whole nother thing that I love. And it made me realize that I love people because in my journey, it's going back to loving myself. And there'll be still be people you know, building bridges and putting out fires. They ain't me. Though I'm here to empower the people that do. Yes. Yes. I, I see too how you're so uniquely positioned to support people who have gone through that or, or have those thoughts that I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, I, I don't know how to validate and be kind to myself, that you've, you've been in that place mm-hmm. and now you've come out onto the other side, that, you, that gives you such an incredible perspective to be able to help others. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's, as if it had to happen for me to now... Uh, share that gift with other people that are struggling through the same thing, you know, struggling, lack of confidence, uh, social anxiety. There's times where I go to parties. I'm like so anxious that, or I would avoid certain people, right. And not go across them or, um, 
pretend I'm cool, right? Be a, be be the person with the drink in front of them and just way back in the side, just observing and just not doing anything. So now it's like, well, I get to work the room. It's fun, right? And it was an evolution for me to be this person I am today. Yeah. I just- wow, that's huge. Like I'm just thinking about as an entrepreneur, how how visible an entrepreneur has to be, how visible somebody, even a small business owner has to be. And what you're describing is that when you learn to look inside, when you learn how to get to know yourself, and then you can feel comfortable letting that self be seen, Mm -hmm. that things become so much easier. Then you can be at a party and see a stranger and walk across the room and say hello, rather than feeling scared like you have to hide. Mm -hmm. Goes back to the understanding, right? Understanding where, where these negative thoughts come from. It's so why I disassociate myself from it. It disempowers it. And when I'm in an environment where I get to talk to other people that can rise me up, I'll give one example with Toastmasters. Um, I, I had a struggle of giving feedback and receiving feedback. My, my parents were a point where we weren't communicative. Like there's a language barrier too as well. But they showed love through like taking care of me in terms of housing, food, stuff like that. So there's no emotional deep connection. So when I came across friends that I grew up here and I'd see them poke fun at each other, I would laugh along, sure. But when they make fun of me, I took it personally. Mm. I don't know why. And maybe I wasn't just exposed to that. And there was just some insecurity with that as well. right? And I didn't know how to give it. Because if I don't know how to take it, how can I give like nice, like, like funny statement, right? To just like, you know, bring people back to earth, right? You know, where I'm going with this is that I wasn't able to receive feedback from people. And then Toastmasters gave me a safe environment to me to practice that. Hmm. To receive feedback from a place that I knew that they were supportive and loving, that there wasn't strings attached to that. It was unconditional. And how to give feedback in the same way. And by being comfortable and being exposed to that feedback and, and, and playing with it, it, it gave me the confidence to go, back, go into the real world and be like, this is okay. Because now I have an understanding of who I am mm-hmm. and what I'm working towards, right? If I didn't have that, I'm always in my head, then it's really hard for me to really practice that in the real world. So, so having that safe environment is so crucial. Yes. So, yes. And if you're listening and you don't know what Toastmasters is, Toastmasters is a wonderful organization all over the world. There are small groups where you can go and you can practice your public speaking with other people who are also there to practice their public speaking and that you have that opportunity to give and receive feedback and learn, learn how to receive feedback, learn how to give feedback that you get to practice becoming more comfortable with being visible and being in relationship in when the spotlight is on you. Yeah. It, it does break apart the, the judgment, right? The, the fixed mindset that I had that I was growing up as that the love that I received was, was conditioned based on my performance to now, wow, I'm just here to grow and learn. Hmm. Postmaster that has that environment, right? So growth environment is, is essential to, to helping you find you. That's right. That's right. And you and I, you and I were just talking on LinkedIn about growth mindset and how valuable that is that when you learn how to practice, when you, you know, leaving this in, when you learn how to give and receive feedback, that ability to practice in a, in a growth mindset where you don't have to be perfect. You're here Mm -hmm. just to practice, just to learn, just to explore and even play dance in that it, it changes everything when your mind is in that growth place. Right. And then that just fuels your ability to go take on new experiences and, and, and craft in, in this identity of you that always changes though. Your core beingness is you. So it, it helps you explore now because now you're backed by that mindset. It's the foundation. Yes. So that brings me to how would you, how do you help your clients or how, how would you recommend someone gets more in touch with the you inside how can someone what steps can someone take to Mm. be themselves yeah i always start with awareness awareness is a great conversation to have you know letting people know that they're more than just their mind and 
understanding also the science between conscious and unconscious mind. I do a lot of unconscious subconscious work because that's, that's our, our identity. That's, that's where our ego lives as well. And it's based on these programs that we develop as a child. So when we understand it, we can then separate ourselves from it. Cause I always love asking the question, if you separate your body, you separate your mind, what are you? And people are like, Hmm. And some people say spirit, consciousness, soul. If there's something there, then all of a sudden it gives people hope, hope that they can change because that you're, you're greater than the sum of your parts. Mm. You're much more greater. And that allows people now to open themselves up. It's run by their programs because they've given up. They think that's who they are. Yeah. So I just like to plant that. I always love to plant seeds, asking these powerful existential questions, right? To then question who we are. And that then begins to change. Yeah. Would you say that 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 thing that's still there when you separate your mind and you separate your body that you just described, is mm. that, is that you, is that the place that, that mm. the you-ness of you resides? It's your higher self. Absolutely. Mm. Um, it's that hidden quiet voice that, that whispers at you that you could probably hear when you meditate or when you're alone by yourself. It always yearns for more, always yearns for expansion. You know it, right? People mm -hmm. know it. Mm -hmm. You feel it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, that's, that's the connection to the heart, right? So that is you. That is your highest self. There's really no final destination. So if you follow that, you'll learn to see that, wow, things become fun. Things become <laughs> playful. Things become easy. And you actually get more energy when you start listening to that voice. Yes. So yeah. what is that, right? That is authentically you. When you speak from that place, just like speaking from the heart. That's right. That's you. And, and what I hear you saying too is that when you're, that you're using this word programming, that this idea that we get programmed with these beliefs that then cause us to see the world in a certain way that like what you described in your journey, that you had these, this programming that saw you to see yourself as somebody who wasn't good enough, who wasn't smart. And I like to think about it. I'm, I'm also a, a psychotherapist. That's another business that I have um, as a, as a therapist. And what I, what I like to think about in that world is that we're kind of clearing away the gunk. We're clearing away what you're calling the programming. We're clearing that stuff away, kind of like cleaning a dirty window mm. so that that essence of self can shine through. Like the sun mm. is in there, but sometimes there's just a lot of dirt, a lot of gunk in front of it. And, and mm. when you can clean that off and clear it away, what's already there can shine out. Mm. Absolutely. Um, I love that. Yeah, it resonates with me. It's like the armor that we put on ourselves, especially around our heart, because we've been hurt so much. Mm. And through my journey of personal development, I'm always looking to find myself, seek externally. So I realize it hasn't really left me. It's within me. Mm. So it's not about finding myself it's about remembering who I was mm -hmm. and going yeah. through that self-cleaning process, right? Wiping the window, taking off the armor. Yeah. Um, it's, it's hard. It's scary. Oh yeah, it sure is. It's, it's not for the faint of heart. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why they, 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 they go to you, they work with you, um, finding those safe environments to create that space for people to unpack that. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And, and I'm curious when you are able to show up as you, you know, for entrepreneurs, for people in business, for leaders, um, for your clients, what kind of a difference does that make professionally? Mm. Everything. Because wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're the common denominator. So I see that professional life is your life, is your personal life. I mean, 
I'll give an example. Don't you have bad days at work? And then do you find that sometimes you bring that home and your spouse, your kids, whoever you're with feels it, is affected by it? Or let's say, you know, you have something great happen at home with the family, amazing vacation, or let's say you, you've been recently engaged and then you, you go into work and you got that glow. You're, you're, mm. you're, you're jumping up a bit, right? So they go hand in hand. And, and my, my intention is that for, for you to be the same person, no matter the environment, whether it be at work, at home, sports league, church, going to a seminar, vacation, friends, you're the same person. It's possible. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I wore a different mask in those environments before. It's not to say that we won't wear masks. We still do. As human beings, we naturally do. I believe that. Though the mass is still authentic to me. Because I'm here to connect with you and meet you where you're at and speak your language. Though I know who I am. And I'm not here to seek your approval. Where before, I was. Mm. So I molded myself to seek your approval. And so it's a bit different. So yeah. then that's your true being wherever you go. Yeah, it's your true being wherever you go. I love those examples of how it's not like we become somebody different when we're, I mean, there may be a different part of ourselves that shows up at home versus yeah. a different part that shows up at work, but the essence okay. of us is still the same. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm, I've heard you say that when you show up as you, that you attract authentic success, mm. that you attract, like it, it, it comes to you. Mm. Can you say more about that? Yeah. It's sort of like, when I show up as me, then the people that vibe with me like me for me. Oh. Right? I don't have to pretend to be anybody else. Especially re- attracting a romantic partner. Right? Then you're just, you're compatible. There's chemistry. Natural. No need to fake it. Pretend I'm someone else. So if I just be me and shine, then essentially I'll attract the right people in my life to do life with. And with that includes success, if you're intentional of what you want to create. Because when you put it out there, this product, this service, and this is for you, it just goes back to you'll attract the right ideal clients that come to you because you're so clear on what you're there for. And I always use this analogy of like my city, Edmonton, Alberta, has got a million people. Imagine if I was serving a million people, I wouldn't be able to sleep. I don't think I'll be able to do that. Though, if I just had 1% of that, I think it'll be taken care of. Just going back to like, if you had five to six, seven raving fans that like you for you, you'd be taken care of. Mm -hmm. So I just got to be specific and know who I am and cut down the noise. And then life will be easy because now you're working with your people. You're working with people that like you. You like them because you're the same. You share the same values, right? The same mission, core beingness. It's not to say everybody else is wrong. No, we all have our taste, right? It's like a buffet. Yeah. We all have our own preferences for food, right? There's always a different perspective. I love different perspectives. I love variety. Imagine we're all the same. Like, oh my God, how boring would that be? And that uniqueness allows us to evolve, allows us to like taste the joy of life, the, the, the many different tastes of a creme brulee, right? That just fires off in your taste buds. That's the flavor of life. Yes. Right. So then yes. going back to you, you're just finding your flavor. Hmm. Yes. And, and as you were describing that too, I was thinking, yeah, you know, when, when that's covered up, when, when the essence of you is covered up, there's the lights not shining out. No one can find you. No, the people who vibe with you don't know they vibe with you because they're not feeling your vibe. But when you're, when you learn how, you know, working with you and learning how to uncover that and let your vibe come out, let your light shine, that allows the people who vibe with you to know you're there. If you Mm -hmm. cover up a candle, you put a cup over it. Nobody even knows the candles there, but when you take that cup off, then the light can shine Mm -hmm. and then people can the people who vibe with you can easily find you. Yeah. And it gives you so much energy. And one thing I, you know, especially zoom these days, when we have zoom presentations or speaking, we see gallery view, right. Mm -hmm. And then we see some people that are dozing off on their phone, yawning. Right. Uh And then we see other people 
straight to the camera, nodding, smiling. That right away shows who you're resonating with. Mm, and yes. going back to the to the light, if I look at the people that are just disconnected, not there with me, it actually sucks my energy, doesn't it? Just like you put that thing over the candle, no air, the fire goes out. Yeah, exactly. But when I look at the people that are not along engaging with me, we're giving and receiving, I'm looking at the light. So it lets me shine brighter. Ah, uh, right? it's reciprocal. Mm-hmm. When we shine out and then when, when other people shine, we get to give to each other. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm feeling that right now with you, you that, you know, that I get to feel the warmth and the, the, the vibe of your light and I get to share mine with you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's beautiful. And that's why it's, it's success. That's success where right? that's connection and things that's become right. ease and flow, ease and flow. Yeah. from that That's space. right. So if there is one thing that you wanted the listeners to take away from this conversation today, mm. what, what would that be? Mm. You know, that would be looking at staying in the question, right? And becoming your own observer. That's life-changing for me. If I can start separating myself from my mind, my body, and start questioning, that awareness would be, begin to kick in every day. I'm at a point where I'm a different person every time I wake up because I come from that place of observing, okay, what can I do better? Mm. What did I learn? So treating myself as observer allows me to start treating my life as my own character in a video game, as my own actor in the show that I produce and direct. I can then really control the strings of this human mechanism and then direct it to a life that I want to create that's congruent with me. Though it starts with separating yourself from your mind and just ask yourself, be the observer, look yourself from a third person and just start questioning. And now we'll start feeding itself mm. on its own. Uh, ob- observing and curiosity, questioning. Yeah. 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 Question everything. Yeah. Stay in the question. Yeah. Great. So, so make sure you soak that in. If you're listening, just soak in that idea of being an observer, being curious and questioning. And Mm -hmm. that is, that's the key to getting to know you and letting Mm -hmm. your light shine. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, Andre, thank you so much for being here today. This was such a joy, such a joy to be with you and to talk about this, to spread this message of helping others to let the, the unis of them really come forth. Thank mm-hmm. you for that. Grateful for this opportunity. Thank you. Mm-hmm.